Punk Revolution now. Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about how capitalism is literally destroying indie music. It is in the process of making indie music worse and worse. This is, I think, a very important concept. It's one of the big reasons why I have a YouTube channel, why I want to have a punk revolution. I think it's very under important for everyone to understand so we can help make the music industry and just make the DIY indie music community better. By the way, I'm someone who has released a lot of music, I've toured a lot, I'm also a music critic who has reviewed a lot, so I have a very good grasp on the music industry and how it works. And I'm also someone who has a degree in economics, so I'm someone who actually really understands how our economy works and how all these things are intertwined. I'm not speaking out of my ass based off stuff I read on Twitter. I think these are very important concepts, and I feel like I'm in a good position to share a lot of really inform useful information to you about it. So first thing that's incredibly important to know is that money plays a crucial role in literally every single piece of music you've ever listened to. From the big pop stars, like, you know, Taylor Swift or whoever who are signed to those major record labels making hundreds of millions of dollars. Pretty obvious how money plays a role there. Money is their main incentive to get as many streams as possible, whatever. But even the really small Indie artists you find on Bandcamp with like 20-ish fans and makes artsy music that's very clearly not designed to be a profit thing. Believe it or not, there's a ton of money that's playing a huge role with those bands as well. That's really important to understand. Just consider the amount of money you have to invest in the first place to make music. First off, you gotta buy all the equipment. You gotta get a guitar, bass, drums, amp microphone, you gotta get all that stuff together. You need to, if you wanna start a band, you're gonna need friends who also have the equipment, so you gotta have rich friends. And if you want rich friends, then you're gonna also probably wanna be rich so you can make meet friends who are rich. And then you're gonna have to pay for a practice space, so you get to practice together. If you wanna, you know, record, you're gonna need an audio interface, and you're gonna need some fancy software, and you're gonna need an expensive computer to be able to put all this stuff together. Okay, so just first off, literally just the act of actually making music costs a lot of money. And if you, if you wanna, do a, you know, record a an EP or an album, that can cost a lot of money. If you want to record an album of decent quality, be prepared to spend up to 5,000 fucking dollars. Yes, $5,000. And on, trust me, money makes a big difference. The more you spend, the better the album's gonna sound. The less you spend, the worse it's gonna sound. It makes a big difference. So you put this all together, and the bottom line is, to make music costs a lot of fucking money. And you might be thinking, okay, well, Hypothetically, let's say I don't have money. I'm not a very wealthy person, but I feel so creative. I'm gonna do the good old fashioned way where I'm gonna pull myself up from my, up from my bootstraps. I'm gonna save money over the years to buy all this equipment even though I don't have money. And because I'm so creative, I'm gonna make music that's so fantastic that it's gonna be worth the investment. Well, that sounds really nice and all, but believe it or not, that's really not something that actually happens besides in your imagination. Because when you do put all this money together, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, tons of hours of effort together to make a release that's actually pretty damn good, once you release it, guess what happens? Maybe about 50 people listen if you're lucky. You know, you share it on Facebook, you share it on Twitter, your close friends will listen to the first song and then it'll stop you and be like, why am I gonna care about this? Why am I gonna listen to this artist who's released absolutely nothing? I don't know them, never heard their name. That's how it goes for the vast majority of people who've released their music. It's a sad thing. You work your ass off for years to get this shit together and you release it and nothing happens. Then you might be asking, okay, how are some bands actually able to make it, actually build up a fan base and be able to tour and do all this fun stuff? Well, if you're really committed to growing your project or convinced your music is really fucking awesome and all that stuff, well, there's actually a number of things you gotta do to help build your audience and guess what? It all costs money. From ways you can literally basically pay blogs to talk about your music to touring, which is something that certainly costs a lot of money to get all the equipment together and get a van and drive and pay for the gas and all that stuff. You might make some money off your show. You're probably not gonna make much, okay? You gotta take a day off work. Touring costs a lot of money. All these things cost money. For Died, believe it or not, one thing that actually helped us a lot is we literally paid for fake likes on Facebook and fake followers. That might sound absolutely fucking ridiculous, but guess what, it fucking worked because all these fucking blogs and music critics, they don't care about anything besides having people visit their blogs. So they wanna review musicians that already have a following. So if you they, they see you and you've released fantastic music, but they see you only have 100 likes on Facebook, they're not gonna give a fuck about you. So died, we literally paid to get 10,000 likes on Facebook. And believe it or not, our first EP out of nowhere, which was this experimental little thing with poor production quality, we actually got some 
reviews because some music critics would actually take us seriously because we paid for Facebook likes. Do you see what I mean? Like you have to, you have to, you have to, you have to think. How can I use my money to get my shit out there? Because if you don't have money, I honestly don't know what the fuck you can do. And you might be thinking, okay, well, how are the hell are all these bands out there that kind of make mediocre music that make it? It can't be that hard. There's plenty of mediocre generic indie bands out there that have tens of thousands of listeners on Spotify and Facebook or whatever. And you might actually see a lot of those bands, their secret is they have a record label behind them. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I guess, you know, the next step is I'm a small musician with no money. Hopefully I can get a, a record label to invest in me so I can expand my fan base because my music's actually really good and it deserves it. And then the big question is, okay, then how do I get signed to a record label? To get signed to a record label, record labels want to see that you've toured a lot, that you have a lot of followers on social media, you have a lot of listeners on Spotify, Basically, in order to make it as a band, you need a record label, but in order to get a record label, you need to make it. And the only way to break that fucking cycle and be able to make it and to, 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 to pass that paradox is to have connections and to have money. Because if you want to tour a lot, if you tour a lot, even if your music sucks, and you get a lot of press, even if your music sucks, you can get a record label behind you. And the way to do that is with money, okay? I would much rather be a mediocre band with a lot of money and a lot of connections than a fantastic band with none of that. And the end result is you have a DIY indie music scene where there's a small group of bands who are very successful doing the whole thing, touring a lot, getting a lot of listeners and all that shit, making pretty mediocre music, and all those bands that are very successful, I promise you, they all come from a background with money. And then you have all these people, hundreds of millions of people around the world who are very creative, very talented, making some maybe small indie music, but they're not gonna be able to get anywhere because they simply don't have the money for it. There's no, that's just, that's just the bottom line. We have a system in place right now that only allows people with a lot of wealth to become musicians in the first place and that is, that is terrible. Just think of all the fucking amazing music we'd have if everyone was able to actually make music reg regardless if they, if they come from a background with money. You know, I do like to think back to some of my favorite punk bands throughout the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, my favorite indie bands. To the truth, there's a lot of these bands, these rock bands that kick ass are bands that started from really nothing, coming from poverty and kind of working their way up and, and, and succeeding and becoming these fantastic bands. I really do believe coming from a background that isn't just being born with a shit ton of money is going to inspire you and, and give you a different perspective and allow you to create more interesting music. But unfortunately now, that's not something we really see too often nowadays. We're seeing these experimental artsy bands making kind of no wave inspired music. No wave being a scene of music that was certainly entrenched in poverty and entrenched in, 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 in drug abuse and hardship. And, and misery. We're seeing music like that being made by kids who are really, you know, rich and don't have anything to do with that. And it just sounds really, you can literally hear it sounds so artificial. Like they're, they're, they're pretending to be crazy and they're pretending to be miserable when really they're, they, you know, they went to like one of the best colleges in the country. And it just seems that the inequality in the music industry, especially in the indie scene, just gets worse and worse and worse. It seems like the more I dig into the, the big indie stars and the big pop stars, what whatever genre, the more they came from a background of money. And I personally suspect it's getting worse because inequality in our whole entire country is just getting worse and worse and worse. So it makes sense if the entire country is getting more and more unequal, that the music industry would also get more and more unequal. And then you're getting it more shitty, shitty music just from the same people who have the same sort of backgrounds and same thought process where they, they think they're artsy and creative, but they don't realize they have everything fucking handed to them on a silver platter. And I think people seriously underestimate how terrible that's having an impact on our music. It's both unfair and I really believe it's it's actually wearing away at the quality of our music. You might actually think that capitalism has helped the music industry a lot and helped make just the indie music thrive a lot better because now people are have the internet where they can share their music easier. Like I'm able to do this YouTube channel thing. The equipment gets cheaper and cheaper so people can more easily do like a DIY thing instead of having to spend a ton of money to go to a studio. All these things logically point to, well, you know, technology getting better. It looks like capitalism is making indie music something that should be better. But when I actually go out there and listen to all the music, even though there's so much more music out there with Bandcamp and stuff, what I'm hearing is just music that just doesn't, that, 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 you know, the music that's like actually out there and, and succeeding is it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't really inspire me nearly as much as the music from 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I do feel like the exception to that might be hip hop because there is actually a lot of hip hop coming out from people who don't necessarily come out from a, a, a wealthy background. Maybe this wealthy, shitty music problem is primarily something involved in rock music, but 
I think it's probably just a poison for the entire indie music community in general. So the question is then how do we fucking address this and solve this? There's been a lot of different, obviously, debate and, and ideas about this. Some people critique that, you know, record labels, because record labels have all the clout and all the money and all the power and they are able to decide who are they gonna let into their label and they're only gonna choose artists they already perceive as rich and successful, okay? Yes, okay, record labels play a role in here. And But I just wanna say though, you can't really just entirely blame record labels because everything they're doing is very logical for them. They're not like, you know, it would be in their, it, it, it would be against their self-interest to purposely go out of the way and pick these small random indie artists with a, with a f exception of a few really cool labels that I enjoy a lot and a cool a few c cool music blogs that I like that I enjoy a lot. But overall, all these music blogs and music record labels have incentive to compute c continue building up this kind of system of, of rewarding the few wealthy musicians and not giving a fuck about anyone else. That's, it's, 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 it's like, it's a logical thing for them, so I don't really blame too, them too much. It's more of a systemic thing. And some people have blamed Spotify for paying musicians so little. You know, if you're paying so little, that's really not allowing a lot of musicians to actually focus more effort into making more music because there's no there's no financial gain for them so they literally can't afford to do it. I think blaming Spotify is also misguided because if they did, you know, like let's say let's say if Spotify like tripled the amount they pay musicians, it's something they wouldn't be able to afford to do, but hypothetically if they did do that, the truth is that really wouldn't help most indie musicians at all because they're only making like a hundred bucks off Spotify and now you just gave them 300 bucks, not really making a big difference. But it would really help Taylor Swift and Kanye West and all those, and Drake and all those artists who get a lot of streams. So I think that would actually only increase inequality in the music industry, believe it or not. So what I see as probably the best solution for now, unless there's like a, a big punk revolution, which of course I want, which which completely reimagines the music industry and, and, and puts the actual quality and creativity of the music above everything, I think the best thing we can hope for for now is to fight for better wealth redistribution across the country because believe it or not, all of these things I'm talking about, of course they're impacting the music industry, but it's something that's been kind of happening in the grand scheme of our, uh, our economy with increasing inequality. I think we seriously need to redistribute wealth just to help everyone out. Let's just get, let's, we, we can literally afford to just completely get rid of poverty, by the way. We should absolutely do that. We should do that. And I think if we can redistribute wealth, then people who are on the lower end of the income spectrum are actually going to be able to do things like take a day off work to play a show, be able to actually afford their instruments and record and do all the things that they need to do to kind of get the ball rolling, okay? So basically what I'm trying to say is we gotta address inequality. We gotta address, we gotta address inequality. Right now our economy and our capitalist system is just making inequality worse and worse and worse and worse. I see very, very much a firsthand account of how that is destroying indie music. How is that making just shittier and shittier music? And I, I can't even begin to grasp how that's, that's, that's damaging our entire society as a whole. I'm sure it absolutely is. I can say for sure though it's having a horrible impact on music. So we got to address that. Hopefully that's, I, I, I know for sure if we can, if we can do that, that's going to help make, make, um, make, make music a lot better. I would be interested to see like a professional, someone with like a PhD do a paper on the correlation between inequality, um, in the United States and how that's impacted the music industry and just, and stagnant wages and, and neoliberal policies and welfare reform of the nineties. All these things that have certainly had a big impact on making life for people who are poor in the United States shittier. I would like to see how that's impacted the quality of music and rock music and, and the quality of music being being released by people who who, are, who don't have as much money. I, I, I bet there's a strong correlation there. As someone who's, who studied this stuff, that's what I believe. I don't have any like academic papers on this. I think it's a great idea for someone to research this though, because I'm very, I very strongly believe it's just one of many ways that inequality is is destroying our fucking society. So that's all I gotta say, folks. I hope you found this interesting. There's a lot I could talk about on this. This is something I think about a lot. It's why I started my YouTube channel. We need a punk revolution now. If you found this interesting, please like, comment, subscribe. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Maybe there's, I'm sure there's a lot of other things going on in the music industry that's, um, that's, uh, you know, negatively impacting it. Like probably the fact that a lot of people who get involved in the music industry nowadays are just fucking narcissists who want to chase clout and become famous and not actually contribute anything creative. Okay. There's a lot of, there's a lot of issues going on right now, but you know what? I love music. I love indie music. I love rock. I love punk. I love the underground DIY music scene. So I want to save it and I want to talk about these things so we can work to address it and work to make it better. Thank you so much, everybody. Please like, comment, subscribe. My channel is growing very fast because of you. Punk Revolution. Nah.